They just don't make them like this anymore. Fire feel that they are leaving a landed. But it's in a condition that nobody wants. I'm nice because the corn is dropped near my head. Can we transform this old and dated two-storey HDB and help sell this home? Wow. Excuse it. This is like, give me a second. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> What does it take to sell a home? How do you our potential buyers and seal the deal? Today, we're checking out a super rare executive masonette in a great neighborhood. But it's not selling. Time to find out why. This week, we're in Bradel Topayo, one of the oldest and most popular HDB estates. With just about every imaginable amenity available, it's no wonder that properties in this neighborhood are always in high demand. Hi, I'm Eileen. I've been a property agent for 15 years now. From high-end properties to humble HDBs, Eileen's diverse portfolio is a testament to her years of experience in the business. I become a property agent because I like serving people and like to see beautiful houses. So, Eileen, what do you have for me today? I'm going to show you this house with unblocked view, bright, spacious. You don't want to miss it. OK, let's go. Come. Introduced in the mid-80s, executive maisonettes were the more spacious and upscale public housing option, with two floors that mimic the layout and feel of a landed property. Faced out in the late 90s, these units are now rare and getting on in age, with this particular unit having just over 60 years of lease left. Victor! Hi, Eileen. Welcome. This is Bowsy. Hi, Bowsy. Hi. Welcome. Come on in. Oh, thank you, thank you. Let, me, you. let me just show you in. Yeah, hi. Wow. So this is the downstairs. Huh? So we have the dining room here okay. and the uh, living room is in front there. Wow, this is such a huge space that you have here. <laughs> yeah, it's been very helpful, very functional. Mm. This is the spare area, different from the dining area. Mm. And we used to have like a lot of visitors and all that. So we just get some extra chairs and a coffee table and uh, put it over there. So this is like the versatile this area. Is a, this is the uh, area, yeah, versatile area. It feels like a wasted space here, right? Sometimes I feel that way, <laughs> yeah. It was big then and seems even bigger by today's standards. With nearly 1,600 square feet spread across two floors, this executive maisonette features four bedrooms, three bathrooms and a balcony. Except for the newly renovated kitchen done up by HDB, Everything in this house is in its original condition from nearly three decades ago. The asking price, $1 million view to offer. I live here with my wife, just the two of us. We moved in in 1997, so that's like we are now 26 years. It's like our little castle. It's very cosy for us. Actually, this is a very long walkway, right from the beginning, from the entrance, all the way to here, it leads you to the living area. That's my wife's favourite couch. <laughs> so we are, sometimes I will sit there as well, you know, we'll binge and watch TV and all that. Like. So not your favourite area? <laughs> no, no, cannot. That's her area. <laughs> we decided to sell this place because it's been a wonderful home, but we feel it's too big for us now. We don't want it to be underutilised. Oh, nice, huh? Yeah. <laughs> One of the main reasons we got this place. So much greenery, it's really comfortable and it's very cooling. And the view comes with a killer location. Just five minutes walk from Bradel MRT Station. And from here to Orchard is only two stops. Yeah, that's right. It's very convenient, it's very, very centralised. This property has a lot of potential, especially with a double level. Buyer feel that they are leaving a landed. This is the staircase that leads to the three rooms. Ah. So the first room is the master bedroom. But Victor, this railing really looks old school. Huh? It is. This was during the 80s, I think, you know. 80s? <laughs> this is the master bedroom. Come on in. It's a huge room. <laughs> yeah, it is. Victor, what happened to your cornices? Oh dear, I was hoping you didn't see that. <laughs> so the original owner put up the cornices. Uh -huh. And I tell you, one night I woke up because the cornice dropped near my head. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> but it missed, it missed, fortunately. Thank God, you, yeah. your head looks fine now. <laughs> <laughs> but was that like a, the first time that you were thinking like, okay, this maybe this is the time to sell the house? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was quite a number of years ago. Oh, really? Yeah, this thing lasted very well. And that's the only part that Sort of. So you were fine when it dropped and then like, okay, and I might see so what like, yeah. Go with the flow, you know. Wow, I like your style, I like your style. Victor, thank you for the house tour. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, this place is, definitely has a lot of potential. 
But maybe I can ask Aileen, um, what are the selling challenges for this unit? Uh, after much viewing, the buyer actually feedback that this house is old and dated mm -hmm. with original condition. That is the part that holding back most buyer. So therefore, we didn't actually get any interest of any offer for the owner till now. Yeah. Right, right. So that's yeah. an issue. So yes. what what is the asking price that we're looking at now? Uh, initially, we are marketing about 1.07 negotiable, but subsequently we did reduce the uh, owner's price. In terms of this area, the same size or even slightly bigger is actually selling around 1 million or below, slightly below 1 million negotiable. After our analysis report and so on, we found that we had to reduce the price in order to attract more buyers to inquire about this unit and create more viewings. Now we actually reduce to one million view to offer. Is that the figure that you're looking at, actually, Victor? Yes, that's that sounds quite reasonable and realistic in view of the prices uh, recently. The thing is that this is what we call a, a negative sale. Yes. So at that price, it is still a negative sale, whereby the capital amount we spend plus the interest rates is actually more than uh, a million. Ah, I see, I see. So preferably, you would want to hit more than a million then. That's right. So that you can at least break even? If we try to break even, that uh, you know, it's nearer to 1.15 or something. But, you know, we, we see where the market is and we, we do our best to, to try to compromise. With the current condition, I don't think it's possible to achieve 1 million because the potential buyer will take into consideration of the cost of making over this house. Victor's house has both the space and the location. But something needs to be done about its old and dated interiors if he wants to sell the house at break-even price. Hi, I'm Raymond. I've been in the line for 20 over years, coming to 30 years. A bold trendsetter, Raymond's work clearly speaks for itself. When it comes to breathing new life into this old and beloved home, he's definitely the one to call. I love retro design. I love colourful stuff. I love to have a mix, eclectic kind of design. There's uh, something that I'm good at doing. So Eileen, um, what is the issue and problem of the place? Most of the buyer actually feedback that this house is original and old, not modern enough for them to consider. Mm, yeah. I think most of them, like those young couples who just started families and yes, stuff like that, they looking right. for a great location, yeah. mm. yeah, bigger right. space for their families. Correct, correct. So I guess the design aspect will be a bit more modern. Yeah. Yes, although the space is there, but they kind of want to see something very latest design. So the main challenges for turning over for the whole place is the flooring is too vintage and retro looking. Lighting, I think lighting is one of the big issues. So the light itself is not bright enough, the place is too empty also. Not, not enough furniture to make it kind of look like someone is staying inside. Victor and his wife need to sell their home at above $1 million so that they can retire comfortably. But to get buyers to pay that amount is not going to be easy. Can we help convince them otherwise? Find out after the break. Rare and spacious in a killer location, this executive maisonette should be an easy sell, but it's falling apart and its dated looks are throwing buyers off. Can we unlock this home's full potential and in the process help Victor break even? Over the years, Victor's home has lost some of its shine. So, we need to have a plan to bring it back and then some. Thankfully, we have a seasoned interior designer who is up for the job. Raymond! Yes? Can you please share with us what are your plans for the home? Yeah, the place is a bit dated and old. Mm -hmm. So my plan is to have a facelift for the place. Nice. And my idea is kind of modern lux. In order to fetch the highest possible price, Raymond decides to stitch the home with an upmarket and premium feel. It looks like a showroom now, actually. Yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> this means totally brand new furnishings and a completely updated colour palette, which includes some surprising choices. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, before we proceed, the flooring. Oh. I don't remember the flooring to be like that, right? Yeah, no, no, no. Very Definitely sharp. Very not. sharp. Yes. <laughs> so, I want to change the flooring. So, that is something that is the biggest kind of uh, facelift, you yes. know, for it looks. Yes. So, the main issue for the whole place is the flooring. I'm going to overlay with uh, laminate flooring. That is the least expensive and the fastest way to do it. Raymond's staging plans cover nearly the entire first floor as well as the master bedroom on the second floor. And as the stairwell is a prominent feature, it too will be getting an overhaul. 
and up the staircase, I can see some greenery happening right there. Yes, I'm still planning some green wall. Not sure oh. yet, so I thought that to have some greenery into the whole interior. Wow, yeah. wow, so, very nice. So I want the stairwell to be also one of the features for the place. You know, people will say, wow, you know, I'm buying a mansion with an interesting stairwell. Same goes for the balcony. So that is also something that I think we should focus on. I want to create a kind of a lifestyle uh, for the balcony area with some uh, bar stools mm. and uh, some turf, yeah, some greenery. It's totally makeover for me and <laughs> I never expect to see such a beautiful house. Yeah. Eileen, now it looks like a $1 million home. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, definitely more than $1 million. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> With the designs approved, it's time for Raymond to do a bit of light shopping. We tag along to get some tips on how to choose the right lighting fixtures that will do more than just brighten the home. A lot of time where you use the wrong light, they will generally brighten the whole place but it doesn't give you the ambience and the warm feel. All this track light, we have different colour. Okay. Uh, for the length of the track, we are able to customise to what you actually need. Right. We are able to remove or add on as and when we want to. So it's very flexible. Very flexible. Track lights are not only versatile, but also simple to install as they can be mounted directly onto the ceiling, saving both time and money. If you want to create this kind of warm kind of feel, you do need to have spotlights to have lights and shadows and create the kind of cosy kind of feel. Exactly what I wanted. For the newly revamped dining area, Raymond plans to use pendant lights to replace the existing ceiling light. Very scandy for this one. Something masculine. For this one, I don't like. It's quite glaring ah, in front of my eyes. I see. This wise, um, I don't really like it because I'm a bit over decorated. Right. I think that one is quite perfect, personally. Mm. It's quite bright and it's indirect. Yeah, maybe I'll need two of them. Wonderful. Yeah, Wonderful. correct. And for the stairwell and balcony, Raymond is looking to use another type of light. So I'm looking for two wall lights. Both have to be bright. Something like this type, or this, up and down through. Okay, okay. Wall lights are excellent space-saving options, making them ideal for areas with limited space. For this one at the corner, uh, same thing you get up to down through. But the differences that you notice that for this one, you get a very nice line over here. This is more diffuse. So I'll prefer this one. I think the light throw is a lot more structure and is brighter. So I'll go for the black one. I black think the black one will work very well. The balcony, would you want to pick the same? Mm. So that it blends in together very nicely. Yes, totally. I think consistency will be good. Let's go for two of this. Sure. Yep, yeah, okay. okay. With all the pieces in place, the staging work can finally start. Two floors and nearly 1,600 square feet of space means that we have to narrow our focus to the most impactful areas. But already, this is shaping up to be one of our biggest undertakings yet. We are leaving no stone unturned, revamping everything from the flooring to the lighting, right down to the colour of the railing. Out with the old and dated and in with the fresh and the new. For the ultimate showstopper, Raymond is working with Barry who is building a 3 metre tall green wall for the stairwell. Ah, so this is the green wall that we're working on? Yes, yes. we are. I see, I see, I see. Yes, so yes. how can I help? Uh, so you can put uh, this here. So just put in like that? Correct, you just uh, insert in, oh. into the hole. Yeah. Like this, for example? Yes, correct. And then let it drip. Let you drip down? Yes. The artificial green wall, there will be some kind of drain cell at the back with a lot of holes. So what happens is that they will literally plant all the artificial green into it, one by one, manually. It's a very labour-intensive process. So, uh, to make it secure onto the wall uh, and to cover every so that we do not see the plastic, uh -huh. uh, it will take about three to four days. Three to four days, uh? yeah. so I think our contribution today is not so much. Uh? Yeah. Yeah, so, we cannot take credit for this. Uh? <laughs> is there any specific way of arranging a nice looking green wall? Usually, we look at the space. Uh -huh. uh, if let's say it's a big space, uh -huh. we, we use uh, slightly bigger leaves. I see. So that it matches the surrounding. Ah. Yeah, and then slight contrast between the designs. So it's important to have like different types of plants. Correct. Once the green wall is fully populated and the plant secured, it's time to assemble and mount it in its final location. The great thing about an artificial green wall is that once installed, there is virtually no maintenance required. Nice. Totally gave a different, different look to this. Is it Thank nice? You. Very nice, very nice. How should we put it? 
square? Actually, after we centralize the first piece, we mm -hmm. can randomly spread out equally. Okay. Crew is helping me on all the furnishing part, sofa set, styling, and all the accessories. Can you please centralize it? Can. Oh. Must be centered and the joint must join together. Okay. Join must join together. Oh, join must. Ah. Okay, Cleo, how do you stage a dining table and make it look so nice that you can impress buyers? What do you usually do? Okay, basically, people like to see beautiful things. Yeah. Me so too. once they see very beautiful things and they are very impressed and they will imagine themselves that wow, I like to stay, I like to eat on this table and eat in this dining room. You just imagine that you're going to a show flat. Whenever right. you see a show flat, you will like, wow, I want to buy this unit. Mm -hmm. This definitely will work together with the yeah. the green wall. Yeah, part of it. Wow, that's a huge tweak. <laughs> yeah, huge tweak. Yeah. <laughs> this one is like fine dining experience, you know, like you see all these. I wonder what my wife would say if I put some tweaks okay. on the nail. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Yeah. It's just amazing that it's it started off from a bare, empty mm. table and now it looks completely different. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Totally. It just looks like so it accentuates just... the whole thing. Correct, you just add a, a bit of deco and people will be impressed. Rather than an empty table, it's like, mm, boring. Mm, so like when it's time for dinner, just light the candles yep. and we're good to go. Mm. Totally correct. Yeah. We've gone all out to give this old and beloved home a brand new and deluxe feel. But will it be enough to impress buyers and get this home sold for a premium? Find out after the break. This rare and spacious executive maisonette should be selling like hotcakes. Instead, it might be selling at a loss. So, we set out to give it a brand new art market look in the hopes of selling it for a premium. From old and dated to premium and super luxe, the transformation is complete. And now, it's time to see what Victor thinks of his home's new look. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, guys. Come in, come in, come in. Wow! Oh. Sounds nice. Feel like sitting down and have a dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you look totally amazed, Victor. Wow. Exquisite. This is like... Give me a second. <laughs> sure, sure. Previously, the house felt bare bones with a dining table in the middle of nowhere. Now, you are greeted by a warm and cosy dining space. The perfect place for unforgettable family gatherings. To be frank, I had to stop and think for a while because it was like such a transformation and it was just beautiful, such a change. Where the dining table used to be is now an intimate chill-out corner, a great place to relax at any time of the day. I need to sit, yes. sit, please. Oh. Just nice for my size. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. My favourite change of the whole entire house. You know why? It's the same really. But it's now black and it matches the drawings, the, frame, yeah, the frames and everything. Yes. I recognise the design and say, okay, this uh -huh. is the same thing, but the colour is no longer shiny yeah. in my yeah, eyes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Fauzi, do you remember the flooring? Of course, Victor. Yeah. You notice your new flooring? Yeah. Absolutely. Not just the look. When I first came in, it took me a while and realised something's different. It's not cold anymore. <laughs> my feet are not cold anymore. Yeah. <laughs> the old marble floors were way past its sell by day. But by covering it with a layer of wood laminate, Raymond was able to completely modernize his whole look and feel. Okay, come on over to the creme de la creme of the whole entire first floor. <laughs> take a seat, take a seat. Wow, wow. Favorite, yeah. yes. Check out your new sofa. Wow. How is it? Yeah, so much different from the yeah. past. <laughs> Main thing is that actually I changed a new sofa set mm -hmm. that I felt that it matches the size of the living. Mm -hmm. I think before that is a bit not very really suitable. It was a well-used black sofa. Yeah. The old living room was dull, empty and lacked any sort of character. Now, it's a luxurious and inviting space with proper size matching furniture and soft, draping day curtains that let just the right amount of light in. You remember the initially the cornices? Yeah. It's called kind of a green colour. Dark green. So very... You remember that clearly. I remember, I remember. Yeah. This colour. Really dated. This oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> country look, country look. You know, I was so glad. It took me a while to realise that it's the original cornice. Yeah. But you've changed the colour to a perfect colour. And I'm so glad you've managed to preserve part okay, of the, the soul. The originality, the yeah. soul of the house, Correct. right? Yeah. Still there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 
If I'm a buyer, I will definitely fall in love with this house because firstly, everything looks so good and blend in so well. Every part of this house is fully utilised. Hey guys, check it out! Wow, wow, wow! <laughs> We've created a garden. The functionality, you know, it's not just the creativeness, they've made so much good use of You cannot space. imagine there's yeah. a garden in your house, right? Correct. Who needs gardens by the bay now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Before, the balcony was practically an afterthought. Now, it's a lush green paradise and a key focal point of the home. So this bar little counter, you can sit around, you know, chill, have a coffee. Afternoon yeah, tea. Afternoon yeah. tea also. Nighttime, you have, can have wine with your wife. Yeah, it's a <laughs> bag. Taking the view. Also, you know the turf? The turf. Artificial mm. turf on the flooring. Yes. Yeah. It's a piece of nature you created here, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, I feel like I'm in the forest. <laughs> it's like real. Yeah. It, this is real, no? No, no, it's not real. The maintenance is it's easy. It's okay, uh, yeah? No maintenance. Totally no maintenance. Yeah. So no need to water the plants. <laughs> <laughs> no need to water your wall. It's <laughs> perfect. Yeah. It's just perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You can have this now in your home. Unbelievable. It's beautiful. The dark and plain looking stairwell has also been transformed into another highlight of the home. With an unexpected addition of a tall green wall that accentuates the high ceiling, as well as carefully placed lights that bring out the beauty of the space. Your luxurious bedroom. Thanks. Yeah. Mm, wow. Yes. Wow. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, I wow. really like it. And for our final act, we took a horribly dated master bedroom that was in danger of falling apart and upgraded it into a luxurious and rejuvenating private oasis. Oh, I like this. <laughs> that you would love to retreat to at the end of the day. Oh, where is the corning? <laughs> <laughs> Some parts of it was already gone, so might as well just get rid of everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. So I kind of uh, mimic that the cornice is still around. Mm -hmm. So I did the white border. Oh, the colour thing. Yeah, so it becomes a kind of a design also, yeah. to be honest. This looks luxurious. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Oh boy. You don't believe this is your bedroom. It's so different. It's so different. Such a... Such a difference now. Raymond, what happened to the window grill? So I took it down. I put up a day and night curtain. So a day and night curtain makes the whole place look more cosy, warm. It's good because it looks more spacious, bright, and makes the whole room look wider. Fantastic. So different. And most of the things I want to do, it happens. So I'm very, very satisfied. Check out the view. Okay. Wow. wow. This is unblocked view. No more blockage. No more grills. Yes. Middle dollar view. Exactly. <laughs> nice. Definitely. <laughs> so before you sell your home for a million dollars or hopefully more, enjoy your new home, sir. I do. I will. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And now, it's time to see if our hard work made a difference. Eileen has arranged for an open house to see how potential buyers would respond to the new premium look. <laughs> It's really nice. So one of the nicer ones we've seen today, actually. With all this furniture, you can still feel that it's very spacious. I think we have a very good sunrise and sunset here. It's really nice. I've not seen this anywhere else. <laughs> no, yeah, no, not in the house. Mr. and Mrs. Ali, what do you think of the property? Is there anything specific about this house that you like? To be perfectly honest, it's all the wooden accents. Ah, okay. Just the consoles, the flooring. Mr. and Mrs. Lee, you've seen the house. So do you like this property? Yeah, we love it. I think it's very well decorated. Like, it's in a living condition. When you come here, you don't really have to do a lot of renovation. Right. The cost is like already saved up. It's spacious, but it doesn't feel empty. It's not empty. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You walk in and you, it, it feels like a home, you yeah, know? Yeah. It feels like you can sit down and then sit and have coffee. You're like... Relax. You can just yes, relax. Yes, it just unwind. Yeah. How much would you be willing to pay for this? Considering the fact that it's so big and then just the way it's been done up, mm -hmm. I personally would say like, 1.2 oh. like yeah yeah, a lot of people think it's like a hefty price, you know, for, oh, HDB, how come you're paying this much? But it's so hard to find this amount right. of space anymore. You yes. understand <laughs> what's the market like right now? Yes. Yeah. About 1 million? 1 million, one million? to 1.1. Yeah. So she says 1.1, you're saying 1 million. So would you be willing to match her price? <laughs> or is this Definitely like willing. up for discussions? <laughs> Potential discussions. Uh -huh. Potential discussions. Uh -huh. We took an old executive maisonette that was overlooked and underappreciated and gave it the makeover it deserves. 
Now, Victor has received multiple offers for this dream home and may even be able to make a profit off the sale. What does it take to sell an old and beloved home at a premium price? In this case, it was adding touches of luxury that made all the difference. It made buyers see the true value of the home and reveal it for what it is. A rare gem with great untapped potential.